So if you're wondering if this is real or if it's virtual back here, it's real. The doggies that might be going back and forth, although they're kind of quiet right now. They're real. I'm real. You're real. And yesterday's webinar was real. And the, the joke in my household is that I fall in love with the last girl I kissed. And it's true. You know, it's literally true because the last girl I kissed is my beloved wife. But it's also metaphorically true because I get very excited about the last thing that happened. And yesterday we had the webinar on you know, being hard on yourself doesn't make you any better. It just makes your life harder. About the self-critical voices. And I'm going to recap some of the highlights. As I said before, I do not record them because there's a field of intimacy and vulnerability and trust. And I don't want people to be worried that anything they say can and will be used against them in the court of public opinion or whatever. But what really has me most excited is how quickly now, webinar after webinar, everyone's falling into a field of trust, of intimacy, of sharing. Of, you know, yesterday, I couldn't get everybody off. You know, it was an hour, we were 15 minutes over and no one was leaving. And, you know, how impossible is that for us? So anyway, I'm just, if irrespective of the topic, if you just want to come and, and hang out with lawyers without talking, without pretense, and just to be able to be real with real people about things that really matter, then I would encourage you that. So that's a bit of a recap, but it's also a slow switch. So again, yesterday's really focused on these self-critical voices in our heads, friend or foe, and it's the first thing I asked. And I got, you know, both, which I knew I'd get. But then I asked the question, it was kind of spontaneous, but I said, is this voice in your head a choice or a compulsion? Did you choose it and say, I am going to be self-critical, or is it just happening to you? And I didn't know what the answer would be, but every single person said a compulsion. I said, ooh, that genie's out of the bottle. You're not getting it back in there. Because once you recognize, wait a minute, it's happening to me. And I don't want to get into the victimization part of that, but it's just occurring, let's say. Once that's there, it's much harder. To say this thing is something that's really in my best interest, you got to objectively look at it. I say it's like a, it's like an arranged marriage. You know, you're that, that's who you're stuck. You're stuck with it. Just, and I'm not saying that you're stuck with a voice. I'm just saying as it is right now, don't kid yourself in thinking, well, I decided I need to be hard on myself, so I have this voice. No, you didn't choose. Chances are, it's just something like in my case. Oh, like my family. Hey, told you the dogs will start. I have four thousand years of this in my in my heritage, and I. I, I came, you know, it came with a package. So it comes with a package. Why do we honor it? Why do we take it seriously? And then we've talked about different what, different reasons that we do. And one of them is because our, our, our understanding of who we are hasn't caught up with who we are. We still think we're that, you know, teenager that stole the dollar out of the collection basket or that, you know, whatever it was, cheated on our girlfriend. You know, who knows? I don't need to get into the, you know, into the moral and venal sins that we feel we all committed. But whatever it is, and we still think, okay, you get locked in time. That What happened makes such an impression on us. So we don't move past it. And so we think, I still need to beat myself up and beat the hell out of myself, so I don't do that. But when I looked at everybody in that on that Zoom screen yesterday, there's nobody there that I didn't trust. You know, are, there, are they perfect or whatever? You know, will they do things that maybe they'd regret, that they need to take responsibility for? I'm sure they will. But the fact is they don't need that voice anymore because they're not that person. But a part of us is stuck in time. And because of that, the punishment doesn't fit the crime. In other words, we're beating ourselves over the stupidest things. You know, things that if someone else did it, we wouldn't pay any attention to it. But because we did it, oh, my God, what a terrible person I am. And again, it's because it's triggering something that's so much more. I don't want to get into the, you know, the psychology of it. But the fact is, we are keeping that voice because we still think we need to be somebody who needs to be beaten. And one of the real consequences of this, is that we're not present. Forget, you know, obviously we don't like the voice. We don't we don't like to be around people that are critical of the world of our own mind we're doing that. And so, you know, that's no fun. And robs us of our ability to be present. If your mind is constantly criticizing, judging, you know, making amends or whatever, you're not there. And as someone said to me, you know, and I asked them why they came to a, a spiritual lecture I was putting on, they said he said, I don't taste the experience of my own life. You're never going to taste the experience of your own life if you're stuck in your head with this stuff. So forgetting about whether it's helpful, hurtful, appropriate, or inappropriate, the fact is you want to be available for life. And as long as my attention's over here, listening to that voice, you're not going to be present. So what is it that we do? And, you know, I, I said, and I, I don't have time to get into the whole thing here, but it's the, the essence of my life and what I bring to the world, and I guess you know, it's what I do for a living, is... It's a trust exercise. Life's a trust exercise. We don't trust ourselves, which is why we feel 
we need to keep such a sharp eye on ourselves and be so so critical of ourselves. And once we have a sense of our trustworthiness, then you know you look at you see what you need to see about yourself. But you start to realize, wait a minute, I can trust myself. I know that I mean good. I know I do good. I know that there's times that I'll make whatever look like missteps or mistakes or have regrets or whatever. But I know that I want what's best for people. And and whatever impulses I have to the contrary, those are not primary. Those are not what's going to take me over and make me do stupid stuff. So it's it's a question of trusting yourself. And how do we begin to trust ourselves? We let go. I was trying to think of something clever to say, but we just have to let go and see who we really are. And let life, let situations prove to us in our own experience that, yes, you know what? I really want what's best. I'm really doing what's best. I can't guess right every time, but I know my heart well enough to know that. And I, if you're listening to this, I'm saying that's you. Call me superstitious. Call me, you know, whatever the hell you want to call me. You know, call me Pollyannic. But if you're watching this, you're, you, you can trust yourself. You don't need that whipper to whip you into shape. And then also, then you start to trust life. And once you start to trust life, all kinds of great stuff happen. So anyway, that's kind of a recap. But one thing that occurred to me at the gym this morning is when I was thinking when people said, you know, what do I do next? I, didn't, I knew I thought of this, but I didn't want to say it because I don't, I don't want the webinars aren't a sales pitch. But you really probably need, in my own case, I needed mentoring. It wasn't formal mentoring. It was life mentoring me through the people that came into my life, creating a field where I could see who I was, where I could trust enough for life to prove itself enough for me to prove myself enough for myself that I could trust and gradually let go of these self-critical voices. And, you know, it's something that I do. Again, if it sounds like a sales pitch, it's not intended to be. You could find somebody else or something else or attract situations in your life to do this. But whatever it is, one, don't buy the fallacy that this voice is your friend and something you invite into your life. It's something that came it came with a package and it's something that doesn't have to ruin your life. And once you're on the other side of it, I can just tell you, you know, it's trees and puppy dogs and beautiful North Carolina days everywhere.